In this video, I will discuss about how to train a very deep convolutional neural network model, that is training a deep convolutional neural network model. Now, before we talk about that, I'd like to mention that some of the major villains um, that come into play when training very deep networks are uh, the vanishing gradient problem, the exploding gradient problem, and internal covariate uh, shift. Uh, the vanishing gradient problem is um, the case when your numbers as they multiply become smaller and smaller and they almost become zero before that they can reach to the end of your network. The exploding gradient problem is the case where your numbers become larger and larger and everything becomes close to one. Um, the internal covariate shift is the case when your distribution of data gets skewed in such a way that learning becomes difficult. Now, ReLU and uh, batch normalization, that is using the ReLU activation and using bat batch normalization as intermediate layers greatly resolve these, um, these issues that, um, that we see when training very deep networks. But we have to remember that batch normalization is something that slows down training. So we'll still see how to use them, um, how to use batch normalization to enable us to train longer, but then we'll also see how a uh, dropout can be used um, to help us um, in situations when we want to train deep models. So let's just start by importing all the libraries that we need to import. And then the next thing we're going to do is load the um, MNIST data set and uh, obtain train images, train labels, test images, and, and test labels. So let me run that as well. Um, and we're going to visualize one of the images just to make sure that uh, we have loaded the image correctly and so on. So here's our image, and this is a number one, and the label is also one. Now, because we are going to train deeper models and, and uh, like, you know, deep architectures, it's going to take very long to do the training. So what I'm going to do is use the set of 10,000 images only as my training images. That is, I'm going to just use the test data set as my training data set because my purpose here is not to obtain high accuracy on the test data set, but to demonstrate how to train deep models and so on. So I'm going to, um, uh, like, you know, reshape the data into appropriate format and then divide by 255 to normalize and then also convert the labels into two categorical. So let me run this so that my, my data is now ready for training. So we have 10,000 images and 10,000 levels and um, all into a format that can directly go into a CNN model. So the first thing that we're gonna see is we're gonna see a model, let's train a model with only four convolutional layers, and we'll see that it does reasonably well. So we have conf 2 d 16 filters in the first layer, kernel size three, another 16 filters, another 16 filters. So basically four convolutional layers followed by flattening and some dense layers, right? So let me run this to build the model and uh, our model will be ready. And then after that, we're gonna train it for only maybe a very few epochs. Let's actually do only four epochs of, of training. So this is a reasonably okay model. We have um, one, two, three, four convolutional layers. So let's run the model.fit. I'm also going to randomly split 20% of the data into validation data set. So out of these 10,000 around 2,000 will go into the validation set and the remaining 8,000 will go into the training set. So let's wait for the training to happen. Now remember this is a relatively small model. Uh, we also have to remember that the problem at hand, the MNIST classification is um, a relatively easy problem for convolutional neural networks. Um, so we'll see that it does, it will actually do really well already. Uh, so we see that after the first epoch, uh, the training and validation accuracy is around, uh, validation accuracy is actually 0.95, 95%. It went up to 96%, 97%. And here we see 98% accuracy. So this model does, does reasonably well. The next case that we want to see is we want to build a CNN model that is almost a thousand layers deep. So sometimes when you take train very deep models, you get uh, you, you get this recursion limit um, that is built into Python, which doesn't allow you to build models larger than 1,000 layers deep. So you'll have to change this. 
uh, if you want to train a larger model with um, more than a thousand layers. But for simplicity here, I'm going to build a model with only uh, 800 convolutional layers. I'm adding one extra convolutional layer that um, like, you know, applies to the input with 16 filters, and then I'm gonna create 800 layer convolutional neurons with four filters each so that the model architecture does not blow out. And then finally, I'm gonna use one convolutional filter at the end with total around 802 convolutional layers, and the remaining uh, stays the same. So let's build this model. And because this is a really big model, it's gonna take some time not just to train, but even to build the model. And the model summary at the end is going to show us that the model has um, these 800 plus convolutional layers. So let's wait for the model to build. And then after this, I'm gonna run the model.fit to do the training. Okay, so there we go, 156,000 parameters. Um, and then let me run the model.fit now on this really, really deep um, convolutional neural network. We see here that in the first epoch, the accuracy is 10 or 11%, which is the baseline accuracy. So basically the model is not learning almost anything. It's gonna take about, it says um, three minutes for the first epoch to finish, but so far the model is almost not learning anything. And because this is a really, really deep model, it's going to have quite a bit of a hard time to actually learn anything meaningful, even after we let it run for a few epochs. Now we see here that the first epoch has completed and the accuracy on the validation data set is around 11.5%. So after the first epoch, the model almost didn't learn anything. It learned just a few things. And in the second epoch, now we see that the accuracy is going up to 12.6 or so percentage. So overall, this model is doing something, but it's, it's obviously having a very hard time learning um, from the data. So I'm going to stop this training. And uh, overall, my objective here was to show that this was a very deep model, but the deep model um, was uh, probably too deep or too difficult um, for, this, for this problem. So let me stop this training. And uh, the next case that I would like to demonstrate is that a model with even 32 convolutional layers, which is much lesser than 1,000, may also have a hard time learning. So here what I'm going to do is build um, in a for loop at 16 convolutional layers, so each Inside the for loop, I have two quant 2D, so total 16 times. So the 16 times two is almost 32 layers, and then we have additional quant 2D here, and one more quant 2D here, almost 34 CNN layers. So I'm gonna build this model, and um, so this has um, 43,000, um, around 43,000 parameters. So let's call the model.fit function in this case. And uh, once again, we have the violation is split as 20%. We're running the first epoch out of the four epochs that we want to test. Let's observe um, if this uh, model with uh, 32 plus convolutional layers um, can learn um, from the training data and also do well on the violation data set. So the first epoch has started. Let's wait for the epoch to finish to see how the accuracy looks on the validation set. So the first epoch completed, validation accuracy is around 11.5%, uh, which is almost the baseline accuracy, so the model has not learned anything significant yet. Um, in the second epoch, once again, the validation accuracy is same, 11.5%, so that also now let's look for the, wait for the third epoch to see if it does anything, if it can learn anything significant once again. The accuracy is 11.5%. So clearly the model is not doing great. Uh, so we have too many convolutional layers and the model is uh, probably too deep to learn anything significant quickly. The fourth case that we would like to see is we would still keep the same number of convolutional layers but we will have batch normalization. We will add a batch norm and drop out in between the convolutional layers. So we still have 
um, 32 plus convolutional layers, but then before the first convolutional layer, we have batch norm and then drop out. So these are repetitive uh, 32 convolutional layers, but after every alternative conv layer, we have a batch norm layer, and after every alternate layers, we have a dropout layer. So let's build this model. It will have slightly more number of parameters because of the batch norm and dropout that we have added. So let's run this example. And in this case, we actually observe that immediately the loss is very low and the accuracy actually is, is uh, looks much, much higher. Um, on the validation set, the accuracy is already 49.5%. Now, when you're actually building your own model, you may not always get lucky. That is, sometimes it may take um, actually you, more epochs for you to get there. But the point is that you have to play around with adding the batch norm layers, the dropout layers, the depth of the network to see uh, how big of a network you can train after how many layers the model um, stops training and, and explore those things to find out an architecture that, that works well. So overall, in summary, what we saw that is that a model with four CNN layers did not do reasonably well. A model with, uh, well, it, it actually did reasonably well. A model with 1,000 CNN layers uh, did not learn much. A model with 32 CNN layers also did not learn. And, and then a similar network with batch norm and all of that, we were able to train. So, so far, the accuracy is 76%. It's not as much as what we had with uh, only the four CNN layers. But with this approach, it may take slightly longer, but eventually the model will get to the point of, uh, like, you know, or surpass the, the accuracy with only four CNN layers. Gradually, the accuracy will keep improving. It's going to take longer, but it will keep improving, and it will surpass the, the accuracy of shallower networks. So because regular convolutional layers, if we simply stack them, don't learn very well once we have more than maybe a dozen or two dozen layers. That's exactly when um, residual networks were uh, developed. So with ResNets, we can train very, very deep layers without a problem, and we'll discuss that in subsequent videos.